Hi, my name is Kyle and I have bladder cancer. Uh, this is the fifth in a series of videos where I talk about uh, my experience with bladder cancer and its treatment. Um, this fifth video talks about uh, neoadjuvant uh, chemotherapy uh, and my first round of uh, MVAC chemotherapy. Um, I have um, T2 muscle invasive bladder cancer. Um, with, with muscle invasive bladder cancer, chemotherapy is not the cure. Um, uh, the cystectomy is the cure. Um, removing the bladder is the only, is the only cure for, uh, in my case, uh, muscle invasive bladder cancer. That, that uh, ensures that, or helps ensure, that um, the cancer won't recur. Um, and really the only way to do that is to, to take the bladder out. Um, so the uh, the chemo um, is, uh, in my case, a precursor to uh, to the surgery. So it's making sure that any microscopic bits of, of bladder cancer that are floating around uh, get killed off um, before we take the bladder out. Um, so so in the case when the chemotherapy isn't uh, meant to be curative. Um, it's either called uh, neoadjuvant or adjuvant um, therapy. Uh, neoadjuvant is uh, when the chemotherapy occurs before surgery, uh, and adjuvant chemotherapy is after the surgery. Um, the neoadjuvant chemotherapy, ke chemotherapy was um, was optional to me, um, but my doctors explained that. Um, Studies have shown that there's about a 5% bump in five-year survival rates uh, with neoadjuvant chemotherapy, chemotherapy before uh, cystectomy. So, well, like my doctor said, 5% uh, isn't much unless you're in the 5% and then it's everything. Um, so, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, neoadjuvant chemo chemotherapy before my uh, radical cystectomy. Um, there are uh, two typical types of systemic chemotherapy regimens for bladder cancer. The the old standard regimen uh, is MVAC. Uh, those drugs are uh, methotrexate, um, vinblastin, uh, adriamycin, and cisplatin. Uh, so MVAC. Um, some recent, fairly recent studies have shown that there is uh, another regimen that is nearly as effective, um, but much easier to tolerate. Uh, MVAC, I'm told, is a, a pretty rough regimen to go through. Um, so this this other regimen that is easier to tolerate uh, is um, gemcitabine and cisplatin. So it's just two drugs. Um, but given that MVAC is still the most effective regimen uh, and that I'm young and, and fit uh, and able to tolerate some harsh side effects, uh, my doctor suggested that I receive uh, MVAC and that I also do it on a, a dose-dense schedule. Uh, so that means uh, I'll be receiving the uh, infusions on a two-week cycle rather than a four-week cycle. Um, my cycle is... Uh, three days on uh, and 11 days off. So I'm, I'm receiving infusions um, for three days and then I have 11 days to recover from that. Um, so in my case, I go in on Tuesday for blood work and methotrexate. Uh, and then on Wednesday, the next day, uh, I receive the uh, venblastine and the adriamycin and the cisplatin. Um, and then on Thursday, the day after, uh, I go in for a injection to um, boost my white blood cell count. And then I'm off for the rest of the week uh, and the duration of the next week. So I'm scheduled for uh, four cycles. Uh, so I'll repeat that, that, uh, that cycle four times. Um, so depending on how my body holds up, uh, 
I'll be done with chemo in between, you know, 8 and 12 weeks. Uh, and then I'll be ready for surgery a few weeks after that. Uh, so I've been through one cycle, and I just started my second cycle. Uh, so I can walk, I can walk you through how my first cycle went. Um, Tuesday morning, uh, I, I get up in the morning and I put lidocaine on my port. Um, and then I cover that with some uh, plastic wrap and then I tape it down. Uh, so I've got a, uh, about a quarter size um, area of lidocaine and I cover this, this whole area with um, plastic wrap to keep it covered uh, and keep the lidocaine on, on my port. Uh, uh, the goal with that is to, to numb, numb the area where they're going to insert the needle so you don't feel the needle going into the port. Um, so then I, my wife drives me to the cancer center uh, and I get weighed uh, and then uh, they sit me down in a recliner uh, either in kind of a curtained off room or uh, a private room. Um, I wear a button down shirt uh, just like this one. Uh, and sometimes like a, uh, a zip-up hoodie over the whole thing because it gets cold. Um, uh, I, they have to have easy access to my port, so I have to have shirts that I can, that I can completely open without an undershirt underneath um, so they can get to uh, the entire area where my port is. Uh, uh, so a nurse comes in and I open up my shirt and they pull off the, the plastic wrap um, and, uh, they have me and my wife wear masks, um, and they wear a mask too, a mask too. Um, and then they sterilize the entire area, uh, with alcohol. So, um, pretty much the whole left side of my chest, they're, they're rubbing down with alcohol for about two minutes. Um, uh, then they stick this super big needle, uh, into my port. Um, the uh, the lidocaine has worked both times I've had it, or I've had it done three times. Um, on all three insertions, the lidocaine has worked really well, and I really couldn't feel uh, anything, um, which is a good thing because it's a super big needle. Uh, uh, and then they cover the the entire area with a, a really sticky plastic uh, dressing uh, to keep everything in there sterile. Uh, so I end up with a a small IV line that goes from uh, my chest and hangs down to about my belly button. Um, and I just kind of fish it out of my shirt between the buttons. Uh, yeah, um, I was really nervous about that, that needle the first time um, because in my chemo training session they showed it to me and it's so big. Um, but the lidocaine works great. Um, I think that's an advantage to having the port, in fact. Um, so you only get stuck once with that one needle, and you know exactly where it's going to be, so you can numb the, the area. Um, and you're pretty sure that that one stick is going to work the first time, um, unless, there's a pro unless there's a problem with the port, I think it's pretty rare. Um, then you get stuck once, and it's, and it's numb. Um, you also don't wreck your veins. Uh, by getting stuck multiple times and having these harsh chemicals going through your veins. Um, um, people talk about their, their veins get really hard and they feel like cords under their skin um, from, the, from the chemo drugs. Uh, but you don't have any of that with, uh, with a port. Uh, also the the, you know the needle's going to be in your chest, uh, and that area is actually really easy to deal with. Um, you've got full movement of your arms, um, and there's no, there's no tubes coming out of your arms. Um, so you can do really whatever you want to in the, in the recliner um, while you're getting the infusion, uh, and not worry about um, messing up the, uh, the IV. Um, and in fact, you can, you can even leave that... Uh, that needle in overnight. If you if you're going in for multiple infusions or multiple days of infusions, you can leave the port accessed. Um, if you're you know super afraid of the needle the needle poke, 
Uh, that way you don't have to get stuck again the next day. I'm not sure you can do that with the other IVs. Um, uh, so the first thing to do when you, uh, when they, after they access your port, um, is, uh, to flush it, uh, there's some kind of, uh, saline flush and maybe an anticoagulant flush, um, that tastes kind of nasty. You can, once they, once they push it in, you can taste it and you can smell it. I normally chew some gum, so I can't, uh, so I can't taste it. Um, so they do that and then they draw blood from your port as well. Um, uh, so they, they run a bunch of scans to make sure you're healthy, um, healthy enough to receive the chemo, um, from that blood draw. Uh, a nurse practitioner comes in, uh, and, uh, does a little consult and asks you about your health, and, uh, you can discuss any side effects that you've been having, and they, um, uh, they talk about how, uh, or, or or if they can address those side effects, and in most cases there's there's a drug for whatever side effect you have, and they're they're really free about uh, prescribing those uh, to make sure that you're comfortable and that you can you can cope with the treatment. Um, and then they review the the results of the blood work, um, and uh, the oncologist or the nurse practitioner gives the okay. Uh, if you're if you're healthy enough to receive chemo that day, uh, and they start mixing the drugs, um, so they they mix the drugs right there in house, um, and they're made specifically for you um, in your dose. Uh, <clears throat> so it, in I think in most cases it takes maybe an hour or so um, to make up the drugs uh, for you for that day. Uh, when the nurse comes in. Uh, about an hour, hour later or so, with with the drugs, and they put on their little, put on their little hazmat suit, um, which which always amuses me because there's so many protections from people who are administering these these drugs, so they don't get exposed to them, but then they just jack it straight into my chest. Um, that's always funny to me. Uh, So depending on, on the day, um, whether it's a long day or a short day, you might get one drug or you might get many drugs. Um, so the infusion might last, you know, maybe an hour on a short day and then six or eight hours on a long day. Um, so my short day is Tuesday and then my long day is Wednesday. Um, they both pretty much follow the same pattern. It's just a longer, a longer day on, on, uh, Wednesday. Um, the third day, the last day, uh, my Thursday, uh, I just go in to get a single injection. Um, so I'm in and out with, within an hour. Um, the injection is a, uh, a drug called Nulasta um, that boosts uh, white blood cell counts. And it does that by stimulating bone marrow growth. Um, I guess the chemo drugs are, are really harsh to uh, your kidneys and also your bone marrow. Um, so there's a reduction in bone marrow, and that reduces the amount of white blood cell, uh, white blood cells, and that reduces your ability to fight off infection. Um, so to counter that, they they give you this new Lasta shot that causes um, or stimulates growth of your bone marrow, um, and that causes your especially your large bones uh, to swell, um, uh, and people have talked about extreme pain from that, like their bones are just crumbling, their, their, uh, their large bones in their arms and their shoulders and their hips uh, and their legs just feel like they're just breaking. Um, and I was terrified of that pain. Uh, the nurses told me to take um, the, uh, to take Claritin, the, the over-the-counter allergy medicine, Claritin. Uh, they said they don't know why it works, but it does. Um, and it, it just completely hides that pain. Um, and most people say that it works for them, and it worked for me. Uh, so I take it um, the night before I get that new last shot, and then I take it for um, five days afterwards. Uh, and I felt um, little twinges in my hips, I guess. Um, 
normally at the end of the day, um, right before I would take the next dose of Claritin. But I never had any real pain from it. Uh, so I was relieved that the, the Claritin worked. Uh, so other side effects from, from MVAC, um, the, the first day, the, the methotrexate, um, doesn't really affect me that much. Um, sometimes my eyeballs hurt uh, when I'm, if I move my eyes. Uh, uh, I think the muscles uh, in my eyes hurt, or around my eyes it hurts. Um, but that's pretty minor. I, I just try to look straight until it goes away. Um, the second day, uh, the long day with all the rest of the drugs, um, I felt fine throughout the infusion, um, and I felt fine uh, up to about a half an hour after uh, after we left the cancer center. But then, in the span of ten minutes, I went from feeling fine to feeling awful. I was still in the car. Uh, my wife was driving, luckily, um, uh, and I just I was just sweating bullets and. I was trying to take off layers of, it's winter time, I was trying to take off layers of clothing and, and turn the AC on as I was just, and I was really nauseated. Um, uh, so I, I, I got home and just staggered into the house and took, um, uh, they gave me Composine to take for nausea uh, on the first couple days. Um, took a Composine, took my Claritin and just passed out in bed and I slept. I like skipped dinner and just slept uh, straight through until the next morning. Um, on the third day, uh, I got up out of bed fine and went and got my new Lesta shot. Uh, and then I pretty much slept for the next week. Uh, I didn't think I could sleep so much, but I was I was just so fatigued from from the chemo um, that literally for the next week I was all I did was sleep and go to the bathroom and try to eat something. And I really didn't have much of an appetite. Uh, I, was, I was really just trying to force myself to eat. Um, but I did find some things that I could, I could make easily and was easy for me to stomach um, and didn't make me sick just thinking about it. Um, so for me, like peanut butter sandwiches and cereal and bananas and um, soups uh, was pretty much my mainstay for about a week. Um, and once I got my appetite back, um, about a week after chemo, um, I was I was pretty anxious to eat some some real food, some some you know some comforting food. Uh, and the first thing I tried was a uh, a creamy carbonara pasta. And that was a bad idea. Uh, that set me back for days. Um, I was up all night with horrible diarrhea and uh, and really bad heartburn. Um, I had to sleep sitting completely sitting up. Um, it was awful. Um, so the next day after that, I pretty much just ate bread and water and bananas. Uh, and I really, I didn't have any kind of appetite for uh, two or three days after that. Um, so you really got to be careful what you eat. Uh, they gave me a binder um, during the chemo training of, of stuff to avoid eating. And that, well, that, that uh, all of those things to avoid were in that pasta. And I really shouldn't have eaten it. Um, uh, also, I think I, I tried to eat a piece of pizza, and that I could feel the heartburn coming on. And I, I normally don't get heartburn. I normally have no problems with that kind of stuff. Uh, but with with the chemo, I've got to be really careful what I eat. Um, so it must be affecting my digestive system. Uh, so fatigue, loss of appetite, and indigestion, I think, are the things that I experienced. Uh, after the first round. I really didn't have, after that first day, or, you know, after after that first uh, bit of nausea uh, on the long day, I really didn't have too much trouble with, with nausea. Um, every once in a while, when I was trying to force myself to eat, 
I feel kind of queasy and I take a take a compazine. Um, but I didn't have, at least after the first round, I didn't have much trouble with, with nausea. Uh, fatigue was the big one. It took, it took a whole week, um, sleeping a whole week, uh, before the fatigue would kind of fade. <coughs> I, um, I eventually got tired of being so tired. And I thought maybe it was because I wasn't getting uh, a full night's sleep. Because I would sleep all day, and then at night I would... Or nap all day. And then at night I couldn't get deep sleep, because I'd be waking up every two hours. Because um, I was just napping at night, too. So eventually I got, I got tired of that, and I forced myself to stay awake uh, for a whole day, which is, was just, it was a struggle. Um, and then I slept a lot better that night. And I did the same thing the next day, and I slept even better that night. Uh, and I found out that I had a lot more energy um, if I did that. If I just, <clears throat> if I really needed a nap, I'd take a nap. But um, if I just tried to stay awake and tried to stay a little active, uh, then I had more energy, and that helped. Um, you know, so a week after chemo was done, left me with about two days of, uh, two days of feeling good. I think I had about two days of feeling good after the first round of chemo, um, before it was time to start round two of chemo. So the, uh, the two week cycle, uh, was about perfect, depending on whose perspective you look at it from. You know, I, as a patient, I would have liked to have more time uh, to feel good before I go back to feeling bad again. Um, but, you know, from the doctor's point of view, it was perfect. Uh, they want the chemo to be as dense as possible, I think. And two weeks was, for me, was about right. So lessons learned from round one of chemo. Uh, get a port. Um, and if you have a port, then the lidocaine works. Uh, don't worry about the needle. Um, you take the lidocaine um, and put it directly on the port and squeeze it directly on the port, about a quarter, a, a US uh, quarter dollar size um, of uh, lidocaine coverage on the port. Um, and when the needle goes in, I, I don't feel it at all. Uh, same thing when it comes out. Uh, even on the, on the even on the long day, um, when they pull the needle out, it doesn't. I really don't feel it. Uh, so don't worry about that. If you get a port, use the lidocaine. Don't worry about the needle. Uh, you're gonna need a driver, um, and you're gonna want somebody to talk to anyway when you're sitting there for eight hours on the on the long day. Um, that that ride home on the long day when I got so sick, I, there was no way I could have driven. Um, so make sure you have a companion and a driver. Uh, figure out what you can eat and then stock up on it. Uh, you probably don't, don't want to do that until after you've already had chemo because you don't know what you're going to be able to eat and you don't know what's going to sound you know, good enough to eat. Um, but once you figure it out, just stock up on it, because you've got to eat. Uh, and it's, it's hard to eat sometimes. Um, so, uh, I, and then, you know, the last thing is just be ready for the fatigue. I was, you know, I've heard people talk about it. Fatigue is the number one side effect. I thought I'd be okay. Uh, but man, I slept. I slept for a week straight. Um, And I think maybe the best way to combat that is to try to stay a little bit active. Um, at least, you know, for me, trying to stay awake um, for a whole day was a, was a struggle at first. But once I did it, I felt a lot better. And I think if I would get up and it's, it's winter and it's so cold outside, but I think if I were to get out and, and take a walk, um, that would probably help too. Um, so be ready for the tea, for the fatigue. Um, but also be ready to try to combat it.
uh, and try to cope with it. Yeah, so first round, done.